Welcome to the Aquarite and Aquarite Pro salt chlorination training video. This video will cover installation and startup for both chlorinators. It is provided for you to better understand our products and how they operate. The difference between the two units will be covered. Before beginning installation, make sure to view Hayward's video titled Chemistry Requirements for Hayward Salt Chlorinators. It is important your water is properly balanced before putting your salt chlorinator in operation. Balancing instructions can also be found in your installation manual. Make sure to read the installation manual included with the Aquarite and Aquarite Pro carefully and completely. This video is designed to serve as a quick overview and does not replace or supersede the detailed installation or operation requirements set forth in the product's owner's and installation manual. To obtain a free additional copy of the manual, please visit Hayward.com. Let's start with the electrical installation. Prior to installation, make sure all electrical wiring conforms to local codes, regulations, and the National Electric Code. It is important to plan where the salt system is going to be installed and to make sure that the desired location is within 15 feet of where the cell is plumbed. All turbo cells come with 15 foot cords. Aquarite and Aquarite Pro work with 230 or 120 volts AC 60 Hz single phase voltage. The amperage is rated at 1 or 2 amp respectively. To wire Aquarite and Aquarite Pro, turn off all electrical power at the circuit breaker. Next, remove the dead front or face plate of your unit to access the main circuit board. This is done by removing the two screws that secure the dead front using a 5 16th or 8 mm nut driver. Aquarite and Aquarite Pro systems should be installed on the load side of the main pump timer, which means the salt chlorination system should only have power when the pump has power. The only exception to this rule is if the Aquarite or Aquarite Pro is going to be communicating via a data wire with a Hayward control system, such as a ProLogic Aqua Plus On Command or E Command 4. In the cases of working with a Hayward control unit, your salt chlorinator should be wired for line power, which means it is powered all the time. The Aquarite Pro would also be wired for line power if Hayward Sense and Dispense Chemistry Automation is installed. Start the wiring by attaching the green ground wire to the grounding lug using a 5 16th or 8 mm nut driver. The systems come factory preset to accept 240 volts AC. It is critically important to test the incoming power prior to wiring the system. Supplying 240 volts AC when the system has been changed to accept 120 volts AC will damage the board and may cause personal harm. When wiring for 240 volts AC, place the two incoming voltage wires on terminal 1 and 4. Note that 1 and 4 are the top and bottom connections. When wiring your system for 120 volts AC, loosen terminals 2 and 3. Remove the two stacked jumpers and move one of the jumpers up a terminal and the other down a terminal. Now we should have a jumper between terminal 1 and 2 and another jumper between terminal 3 and 4. To apply 120 volts AC, attach the two wires, normally black and white or red and white, to terminals 1 and 4. Note that the power hookup for the Aquarite is on the left hand side while the hookup for the Aquarite Pro is on the right hand side. Connect your salt chlorine generator to the bonding system using number 8 bare wire or number 6 bare wire for Canada. A lug for bonding is provided on the bottom of the salt chlorination cabinet. Proper grounding and bonding is required and should alleviate galvanic corrosion associated with the pool structures. After all electrical connections have been made, reattach the dead front or face plate prior to powering the unit back up. Lastly, apply power to the system with the Aquarite in the off position and the Aquarite Pro with the stop start light not illuminated. After confirming your system is properly powered, turn off the breaker or time clock. The cell and the flow switch will need to be installed in the plumbing on the return line, downstream of all pool equipment. By downstream we mean the salt cell and flow switch should always be the last piece of equipment on your pool's plumbing before water is returned to the pool. 
the following configurations are acceptable as long as there is 12 inches of straight pipe before the water enters the flow switch. The salt cell will satisfy the 12 inch requirement if it is mounted directly upstream of the switch. Non-compliance with this rule may result in improper flow readings. The flow switch should never be plumbed on the common line unless the cell is also on that common line. It is important that the area where the turbo cell and flow switch are being installed is well ventilated since we will be gluing fittings and pipe. To install the turbo cell, attach one of the unions without the tailpiece to the back of the cell. Once one of the unions is attached, hold the cell up to the plumbing and mark a line from the end of the union and another line flush with the front of the cell. Prior to cutting, remove the union from the back of the turbo cell, making it available for installation. Cut the PVC as straight as possible for the best results. When the PVC has been cut, use a rag and remove any burrs that have formed. Slip the unions over the pipe with the threads facing in towards the cut. Remember, if the PVC is glued without the unions in place, the plumbing will have to be cut again, which will not make for a clean installation. If using 2 inch plumbing, prime the cut area and inside of the tailpiece with PVC primer. Once primed, use PVC glue on both the pipe and the inside of the tailpiece. Hold in place following the instructions specified by the glue manufacturer. If inch and a half pipe is being used, a PVC bushing will be needed for each union since the unions are 2 inch. For best results, mount the turbo cell with the cord facing the ground. This is ideal in lower flow situations like when a variable speed pump is installed. We will check for leaks later in this video. Now that the turbo cell has been installed, the next step is to add the flow switch. It is important to make sure that the arrow molded into the hexagonal nut of the flow switch is pointing with the flow of water. For example, if the water is flowing from right to left, the flow switch arrow should be pointing to the left parallel to the pipe. The switch will only work in one direction. The flow switch can be mounted on a horizontal or vertical run of plumbing, with horizontal being preferred. In this install, the flow switch is being installed on the pull return, which is vertical plumbing. To accommodate the flow switch, approximately one and a quarter inches worth of pipe should be removed. Cutting the pipe straight is important when using this measurement. Follow the same steps for prepping and gluing the flow switch in place as was done with the turbo cell. Now that the turbo cell and flow switch have been installed, along with the system having been wired and the chemistry balanced, it is now time to activate the circulation system to check for any leaks. If no leaks are present, open your salt chlorinator's door and plug in the turbo cell cable where it is labeled cell. Then plug in the flow switch under the cabinet, just as if we were plugging in a telephone cable. For the Aquarite system, the first step once powered up is to set the turbo cell size. You can find the model number of your turbo cell on the label that wraps around the center of the cell's body. Locate your T-cell number and press the diagnostic button eight times to access the system cell programming. If the number reflected does not match the model number, move the three position switch up to superchlorinate and back to auto. Repeat this process until the model number matches the program cell size. Make sure to view Hayward's video titled Chemistry Requirements for Salt Chlorinators to ensure you have added the proper amount of salt. Once the turbo cell model is set and the system has defaulted back to the salt reading, move the three position switch to auto. The system will now likely read 2800 on the first screen with the power and no flow LEDs flashing. This will continue for approximately 60 seconds. Allow your Aquarite system to run for 24 hours for an accurate salt reading. Additionally, it is important to periodically check your water salt level independently with your own test kit or from your local pool dealer to verify the system's readings are correct. If the no flow LED does not go out but remains a solid red after flashing, verify that the flow switch is plugged in and is plumbed with the arrow facing the correct direction. Remember, the arrow should always be pointed with the flow of the water through the plumbing. 
If unsure of the flow switch's direction, turn the pump off and rotate the switch 180 degrees in the flow T. If the no flow LED goes out after 60 seconds, the power and generating LEDs should be illuminated. The desired output percentage dial on the front of the system is used to raise or lower the amount of chlorine your chlorinator will produce. The setting is based on the pump's runtime. If more chlorine is desired, turn the dial up. Doing the opposite or reducing the percentage if less chlorine production is needed. Knowing the chlorine production right for your pool and where this dial should be set will take some trial and error. You will find the right setting with regular chlorine readings obtained from water testing. To shock your water, move the switch up to superchlorinate. This will produce the maximum amount of chlorine for up to 24 hours or until the filtration pump shuts down, whichever comes first. The diagnostic button is designed to allow us navigation through the system's readings. As we discussed earlier, the first reading is the average salt level. The following list outlines the next readings as they appear in succession. Average salt. Temperature. Cell voltage. Cell amperage. Percentage output. Instant salt level, program code, board revision, cell size. The operation of Aquarite Pro is very similar to Aquarite, but there are a few differences we need to cover. To set the turbo cell size, press the settings button, then press the right arrow button one time. Press the plus button to open the chlorinator configuration. Once inside the configuration menu, press the right arrow button until the turbo cell types show up. Press the plus or minus button to select your cell number. The info button is designed to show all the information related to the pool. For professional help and service, go to Hayward.com and select Dealer Locator, which you will see at the top left of the website navigation bar. Next, provide the postal code of where the system is installed, as well as 1. A search radius 2. Pool type 3. Product repair and service and 4. Chlorinators Lastly, select Submit and you will see all local Hayward authorized service centers who can assist with the salt chlorinator installation, operation, and service. Remember to visit Hayward Pool Products at www.hayward.com along with our social media sites for helpful information about your Hayward products.